Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a reading vlog. So recently I posted a five books to reread in 2022. I will link the video up in the cards if you're interested in seeing what other books are on this list. I had sort of two books that I was thinking about reading and so I posted to Instagram. One of these reread books was the book that seemed to have the most votes when I checked back in, and that is Doomsday Book by Connie Willis. I described this in that Instagram poll as time travel, science fiction, like Outlander, but instead of marrying a hot Scot, bubonic plague. <laughs> That's not inaccurate. Like, I've started reading this. So I read this in 2012 or 2013. I can't remember if it was a first semester or second semester course. In my third year of university, I took a science fiction course and this was one of the only women on the course. This is set in the year 2054 and we have the ability to time travel and to study history up close and personal. There is a young woman who is within the university. She wants to do first-hand research of the Middle Ages because there isn't good first-hand account. And the Middle Ages was deemed a 10 in terms of dangerous points in history, but somehow the medieval history department has gotten that scaled back. It's like a 10 overall, but there are years within the medieval ages that are acceptable to send a expedition of sorts into the past to collect data. Kivrin really, really wants to do this, and everybody's like, that's a bad idea, you know? Like, most points in history, if you're not a white man, it's not a good idea to go do, like, first-hand account research. The medieval department is really rushing this. Like, they want the victory of other departments. The 20th century department has sent people back and they've been having a lot of, like, success with that. And the medieval department really wants this, like, win on the record that they have first-hand accounts too. And so they're pushing for this and they bring in the expert, they borrow the 20th century department's expert, and they have him do the calculations and they have him do, like, the sending back. It takes, like, an hour because there's a bit of like a time lapse in the past. There's something that they call slippage that can happen. This is like the setup. The expert comes back and he's like, oh shit, you need to come back to the lab or whatever now. We're not celebrating, you need to come back now. And he's like really out of it. He looks really pale. He's not very coherent. And then I get back to the lab, he just, the expert collapses. We're switching back and forth between 2054 and the 1300s where they've sent Kivrin, and Kivrin is just recently woken up in the past or like poofed into the past, and she's not quite where she expected to be. You know, she's sort of wandering, trying to orient herself in the 1300s, trying to find a town before it gets too dark. It's winter. She's dressed historically in like a wool cloak and that's sort of where we're at. I'm excited. This is this is like compulsively readable. I <laughs> like 50 pages in and it was an easy 50 pages to get through. Like I'm I'm so excited for this. That's sort of why I describe this as Outlander minus the hot Scott because we have plagues in both the present and the past. There are plague outbreaks. And if I remember correctly, it's a little bit graphic in terms of like the the medicine and like we watch Claire and Outlander practice medicine. That's why this was sort of my next pick. I also had Lilith Brood because I do want to get to an Octavia Butler during February, but I was also like in the time travel historical mood after just finishing Outlander. So I put it to Instagram. This is what Instagram picked. So this is what I'm reading this evening and I will let you know how it goes. Good morning. So, this is like terrible lighting, terrible whatever. I have a tiny whiny bubba here. So, I have thoughts on Kivrin getting stuck in the past. For some reason this didn't bother me the first time I read this book. Kivrin has gone back to the past and something has gone wrong with her, like her translator here. You'll probably be happier on the couch there, eh? So something has gone wrong with the like built-in, like tech-based 
translator that they've implanted into her. And thankfully, one of the other professors who's been like very against sending someone to the Middle Ages was like, okay, don't rely on the tech, like actually learn Middle English, the French equivalent, the German equivalent, Latin, like spend the next two years, if you're gonna try this fool's errand, spend the next two years learning the languages. She gets back to the past. Yes, she has a fever. Yes, she's very disoriented because she's sick. There's like an unreasonable and like infuriating amount of time spent with her being like, oh, the translator must be broken. They could be speaking Croatian for all I know. So I'm a, a modern day listener and like half-ass speaker and reader of German and a modern day reader of French. F speaking is very bad with my French because the way that they teach French in school is all like reading and writing based. We don't really speak it in Canada. Those are the three languages that I have the modern day equivalent of. Kivrin has the Middle English equivalent of. And I can look at these sentences and be like, oh no, like the, the way that this sentence is arranged is like, it's Germanic in its like word order. It's Germanic in how they're conjugating verbs. I can see the French in it. Very loosely, it is English. It's really French and German that I'm seeing in these, these words. And yes, she has a bit of a fever, but she's like, the fever is broken and she's listening to these two women speak. And I, as a modern speak, like a modern dabbler, I'm not even fluent like she's supposed to be. As a, as a modern day person, I can look at a lot of these and I'm like, oh no, like, I think I'm gonna put this sentence on the screen. It looks like German. There are little things in there that aren't quite German, but what I'm seeing is, did you talk to her? Just based on the words that are here. I don't know that anybody, like unless you're familiar with the languages would have an issue with this, but I'm annoyed with how dense she is because there are so many times where I'm looking at these sentences and I'm like, no, I don't, I don't read Middle English. I don't, I don't have any old languages from my degrees, but I have contemporary language learning. And you would have to be very dense to have any of these languages in your pocket and not see the mo mot ami, right? Like see the, the friendly words. I don't know why I'm finding that so infuriating. I think it's because she's supposed to be an expert. Like she's, she's supposed to be like really determined, really like a go-getter, a groundbreaker historian. Like she wants to be, she's so passionate about her research interest. When it comes down to it, it just flops kind of, and like can't seem to adapt. I'm pretty sure she's in the wrong time, that it's either earlier, earlier or later and they're not speaking Middle English, so all of her languages are slightly off. Good morning. Can you tell I tried wearing sunscreen again? Okay, so I thought I would just chat with you about Doomsday Book while I get ready for work this morning. Miles is at a dentist appointment, so I've got the beast here entirely by myself. And he doesn't like it when all three of us are separated. He's a pandemic child. But let's talk about Doomsday Book, because I finished Doomsday Book. So I think the last time I talked to you, I was a little bit annoyed with Kivrin's, like, inability to adapt to the language change. Because I felt like, as myself, a modern speaker of... Speaker. As a modern, like learner of French and German, I was like, well, obviously, maybe not perfectly, but I feel like there was enough similarities with the language where I was, I was frustrated. I'm still annoyed with this, okay. I guess my issue is that the language shift over like 28 years can't have been more or worse than the language shift that has happened between 1348 and 2022, right? Like that, that's the issue 
that I'm having. So that's the one issue that I had with the book. Yeah, sunscreen is, sunscreen is not my friend. I tried it again and here we go. Skin was looking pretty good. It was all scarring and now we have like actively angry things. Let's talk about the things that I did like. So this book was written in 1992. This book is 30 years old. When it was written in 1992, I guess the thing that might have been closest would have been the AIDS epidemic. What I found really interesting <laughs> in 2022 is reading about a respiratory illness, a flu, that is being spread in 2054. And in 2054, medicine is such that most young people, most university students have never had a cold or a flu because they have inoculations, they have antivirals, they have the technology to like immune boost people. At first things spread really easily in the university setting because a lot of kids are just like, oh, I, I feel kind of weird. They've never been sick before. So they don't know not to like go to the party. They just have like a headache and are a little achy and they're like weird. Um, so they're like super spreading because they've never been sick before. First of all, I find it kind of funny that like the near future Connie Willis imagined in 1992 in terms of medicine, which I guess if you think about how fast technology moved between the 90s and now, like that's a very reasonable near future to picture. The phones have like screens where you can video chat with people, like she was imagining that in 92, but that the phones weren't portable because Dunworthy is trying to make all these calls and connect with people and like the idea of a digital text message like building on the telegram did not occur to her because like so much of this is like trying to get through to physically talk to somebody on the phone like to to voice to voice talk to somebody and there's a lot of miscommunication and a lot of like tension built around like being unable to communicate with people because of the technology system. So it's interesting to see like where she imagined the technology because like we're not that far from 2054 but it would be such a regression in our technology to all of a sudden have like a fixed in-home phone system that yes you can video chat on but like you can't send text through so you have to have someone sit by your phone to take messages for you like i i love the because the near future that she imagined 60ish years ago is almost a little bit behind it's it's kind of interesting to think about the technology and it's interesting to read science fiction that's a little bit older imagining a near future that's close to 2022 right like we're 32-ish years away from the future that she imagined and I can only imagine technology and medical advances getting better. <laughs> um, so it is interesting reading something where I'm sort of in the middle, right? The book is 30 years old this year. 32 years from now is the future that she's imagining, the near future she's imagining. I will say that to see the reactions of folks they run out of lavatory paper, so, <laughs> which felt very 2020. Once they realized that it sort of spread via respiratory droplets, like it's an airborne thing, they start having everybody mask. Of course, there are people who are like picketing outside the hospital, being like, my freedoms, how dare you? Um, and like the, that there's folks not willing to wear a mask, not willing to quarantine, they want to go home for Christmas, they want, they, do you know what I mean? Like just the absolute selfishness she captured spot on. And this is just an epidemic, it's contained to one area. So yeah, I, it's just, it's interesting to see the near future pandemic and like how just through imagining human reaction and perhaps research into other like epidemics, Willis captured something that feels so real, so now, like it could have been written two years ago based on the experience, even though it was written 30 years ago. The other portion of this, so there's, you're flipping back and forth between the 1300s and the 2050s. Kivrin was supposed to be sent to 1318 before the Black Death was even discovered or came into being. I think they said 1322 is when you first start seeing cases of the Black Death, the plague. So she is in a small village outside of Oxford as the plague is being spread. I mean, the Black Death hits 
the little manor house that Kivrin is staying in, and we get to see her. She's not medically trained, really, in any way, and we get to see her trying to use what she knows about germs and sanitation to apply it to just a filthy, filthy point in history. I will say it's very visceral. It becomes very gory. There's a lot of blood and vomit um, and oozing and pus. So like the comparison to Outlander but without the hot Scott to Mary is pretty apt. Like if you are okay with the amount of gore, the relationship here is between Kivrin and the children, Agnes and Rosamund. So their nurse um, died before they came to this manor house in the country. They left the city and they came to this manor house in the country. So she just ends up volunteering to take care of the children and once she has that role as caregiver to the children is able to move around more freely and explore where they are. And it's that relationship with the children that is really like heartfelt and heartwarming and I mean I, I personally would like to have spent more time with Kivrin in the past that you kind of have an equal split between 2054 and 1348 and I feel like I would like more time in 1348. By the end of the book I was almost moved to tears, you know, like lump in the throat sort of thing. Not, not weeping. Like I wept recently reading Under the Whispering Door by T.J. Klune. I wept, like just full on wept for like the whole like last 50 pages of that book. Again, not a happy read. If Outlander is at least feel good feels, this is not a happy read, right? It's the Black Death. So like I was emotionally moved, but I, I didn't weep because I was expecting bad things to happen. I did end up giving this five out of five stars. Should you read Doomsday Book? Yes. If you like soft science fiction, if you are okay to deal with gore and pandemic related materials, and if you are somebody who really likes a character story. Those are my thoughts on Doomsday Book by Connie Willis. It completes a goal for me. It's one of the five books that I set for myself to reread this year. It's a book that I don't think I've talked about on the channel at like at any length before because it was something that I read very much pre-booktube. I really enjoyed it. Also Connie Willis is apparently like a big name in science fiction that I don't see a lot of online. Perhaps I'm in like the wrong spaces but in terms of like what is popular, what is floating around, it's science fiction written by a woman. It's highly awarded science fiction. Um, I believe she won Hugo or Nebula Awards and or Nebula Awards for all three books of this trilogy, which is like how many SFF authors have written a trilogy where all of the books are like highly awarded. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Have you read Connie Willis before. Have you heard of Connie Willis before? Before we go we have to thank my patrons who make videos like this possible. The book club that I am currently hosting that reads small books is reading The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This is a small piece of fantasy literature that thinks a lot about memory and childhood and I'm very much looking forward to chatting about this in a live stream on YouTube on Saturday, February 26th at 4 p.m. EST. It is open to everyone, so if you're reading along, let me know how you're finding this in the comments down below as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're doing well, that you're staying safe, and I will see you soon with another video. Bye!